Hello, I am Zarkoon and this is World of Warships Legends. Today we're going to take a look at the legendary tier American heavy cruiser USS Des Moines, which is now available as a researchable project in the Bureau. The Des Moines is a tier 10 heavy cruiser on the PC version of World of Warships, and it is the pinnacle of the American heavy cruiser tech tree following the Buffalo, which is preceded by the Baltimore. And the Des Moines in World of Warships Legends, if I wanted to describe it in a sort of TLDR fashion, is essentially a souped-up Baltimore. The guns are much like the Baltimore's guns in that they shoot excellent armor-piercing shells with great penetration angles and the ability to rack up massive amounts of damage even at long range. At the same time, though, the Des Moines combines this sort of firepower of the Baltimore with a reload time on these guns that is closer to the Wichita's reload time. The Wichita is a tier 7 premium cruiser that is sort of like the Baltimore in that it has 203 millimeter heavy cruiser guns, which the Des Moines also has, but the guns on the Wichita can be made to reload in like, what, 7 or 8 seconds? These guns on the Des Moines reload in a little bit less than 5 seconds with my commander build, although I think the reload time is 5 seconds base. So these are 203mm guns firing every 5 seconds. The DPM is quite high, and the damage can get racked up quite quickly. Now the Alpha Strike on the HE itself isn't exactly super impressive relative to heavy cruisers. It's pretty average, I'd say. I think it's somewhere in the 2K range. The fire chance is also 14%, which I think is probably really, really good considering how fast these guns reload. And again, about the AP, well, you can see this broadside Iowa out there. We're at 14,000 damage right now as we begin shooting our first AP salvos at him. And you can see there, that one was worth 6K. We went from 14 to 20. Now we're at 27 after just a few salvos at that Iowa. So this AP is absolutely monstrous, even at longer distances against broadside targets. In fact, we probably would have finished that Iowa off if not for our teammates. So yes, this cruiser has a lot of offensive capabilities. Now the shells, like all the other American cruisers, are pretty floaty, so you do have to be quite good at aiming them. It does take a little bit of getting used to, just because I think these shells, relative to all the other cruisers, or all the other nations in the game, the shells on the American cruisers take a lot longer to reach the target. So there is that that you have to take into account. Now, as far as the armor on this ship, it's very much like the Baltimore. It has 27 millimeters of plating, pretty much everywhere, and of course 27 millimeters of plating is quite good if you're facing anything with 15 inch guns or smaller. You can then, of course, angle against those ships, but since the Des Moines is a legendary tier cruiser, it's going to see a lot of 16 inch guns and larger guns if it runs into the Yamato, which is quite common, or the Georgia, both of which have 18 inch guns. Those big battleship guns can overmatch the Des Moines pretty much everywhere, except, of course, on its lower armor belt that protects the Citadel. And the Des Moines Citadel is more exposed than the Baltimore Citadel. You can see right there, I think we took a Citadel hit from that Brandenburg. It's more exposed than the Baltimore or Wichita's Citadel. The Baltimore and Wichita both have that sort of step Citadel that looks like the, whatever you call it, the dais where the winners of the Olympics stand, where there's a raised platform in the middle and two lower platforms flanking either side. That's how I'd sort of describe the Citadel. A lot of it is underwater on the Wichita and Baltimore, except for the section right in the center of the ship. And that is why it can be sometimes kind of difficult to nail down 
the Citadel on those two ships. With the Des Moines, it's not so much of a problem. The Citadel, I think, extends from the first or second turret on the front all the way to the rear turret on the end and is above the water quite significantly, so it's a little bit easier to hit. At least it seems like it should be. At the same time, it's got 152mm armor protecting it, so you can angle that Citadel armor against larger battleship caliber guns, although keep in mind they will overmatch the side plating. The deck plating, however, amidships is 30 millimeters, and that is going to be able to bounce anything up to the Georgia's 457 millimeter guns. So if you're taking plunging fire from battleships at a distance, good chance you're going to be relatively protected from it, thanks to that deck armor. Here, though, is another example of the Des Moines' fearsome DPM. We've made a little bit of an error here in that we were trying to turn down this gap to better position ourselves, and our friendly Grossacur first has run into us. You can see we're sort of stuck. I think this is maybe a little bit of a bug in the physics of the game, but no matter what I seem to do, I cannot get myself dislodged from this. And there is a Yamato about to come around the corner, which is absolutely terrifying. He could shoot me once and sink me instantly. And to top it all off, that Brandenburg over there is also shooting at me with his secondaries and his main guns, I think. So we're laying some AP into this Yamato, trying to hit him up in the superstructure. The penetration angles on this AP are improved compared to penetration angles on other nations cruisers ap so we're able to chunk this yamato very effectively even though he is slightly angled and ultimately we're able to finish him off before he can kill us he got one good hit into us there i don't know if it was a citadel or not but i think that might have been a the a case of the citadel belt armor protecting us from devastation there and then the gk goes down possibly thanks in part to his comprobot compromised ability to maneuver since we were sort of stuck together there and I do feel bad about that but I feel a little bit worse about the game right now there is an enemy destroyer inside of our base and he's got it nearly half capped so I'm heading back there trying to dodge these inexplicable torpedoes which must have come from the other enemy destroyer but Priority number one right now is to get back to the base and stop the enemy destroyer from capping it. I should say, while we're on the way here, that I'm using Beeply as the commander on this ship, so I really have nothing specking into the guns because Beeply doesn't have a lot of those skills. I do have the Ingenious skill, which increases the rate at which the turrets turn, something I think is pretty useful for this ship because it does have a very slow turret traverse time, and the turret traverse time, I think, affects the DPM on cruisers. If you've got to spend some extra seconds getting your turrets on target, then that's seconds you're missing out on shooting the guns. So buffing the turret traverse is good. But the good thing about Beeply is that she has a skill that massively reduces the detectability of cruisers in conjunction with commander inspirations that also do the same. And as a consequence, I've been able to bring the Des Moines concealment or detectability by sea down to I think 9.7 or 9.8 kilometers. Either way, the Des Moines also comes equipped with a radar consumable as you can see here. And the radar has a range of 9.9 .9 kilometers so I can actually stealth radar with this build which is insanely powerful coupled with the Des Moines DPM with the HE and the AP. This thing absolutely shreds destroyers and is a menace to them. An uncounterable menace, actually, if you run the Beeply build and they can't even see you before you're in, or before they are in your radar range. You'll see that coming into play a little bit later in this battle. The destroyer in our base has been dispatched and we are now going to rain down some fire on this kiting Brandenburg to help finish him off. In any case, the Des Moines is very effective and a very big threat to destroyers. I'd say it's sort of played much like a Baltimore and a Wichita, but the 27mm armor plating is a bit of a weakness at the legendary tier. You want to avoid getting shot by large caliber guns whenever you can help it. 
Probably one of the better ways to play this ship is to post up in positions near islands where you can use those islands as both cover and concealment to protect yourself from return fire as you arc your shells over the island. Again, these are the very floaty American shells. They have great shell arcs, so you'll have no problem arcing them over islands. This is very much a heavy cruiser with heavy cruiser firepower, but with light cruiser reload time and DPM, and also lighter armor than some of the heavier cruisers. So it does take a little bit more care, perhaps, to play. At the same time, it's reasonably defended for what it is. And if you can run this Beeply build, well, I think that is an excellent build to run, a very, very difficult build for enemy destroyers to contend with. And speaking of that, there are only four ships left on the surface of the sea in this game. One enemy destroyer and one enemy cruiser versus me and a friendly battleship. Now, obviously, I am closer to the enemy destroyer than the friendly battleship is, you can tell, because I am located. And I'm spotted, which means the destroyer is... Actually, I must not be running the Beeply build on this ship. I have 10.6 kilometer detectability. Nevertheless, I just sail forward a little bit further till I think the Des Moines, or rather the destroyer, is in my radar range. He has no health, so we're able to take him out quickly. And that pretty much seals the deal for the game. Or does it? I am at fairly low health, and the friendly battleship, well, we haven't looked at his hit points. And yes, he is on fairly low health as well, and the last enemy we have remaining before us is the enemy Alaska. So that could be a problem. The Alaska could take out the Bismarck quite quickly, and he could take me out quite quickly. In fact, there he is, giving us a little bit of broadside, so we switch to the AP. Doesn't take too long to do that at all. And we see the Alaska is shooting HE at us, which is preferable. Although his HE can still hurt us, and it can still light fires. We can't afford to take too many salvos from him. Luckily, his reload time is quite slow, whereas ours is very, very fast. And this is going to turn into a contest of DPM here, essentially. So we get the Confederate medal with that shot on the Alaska. The Bismarck or Brandenburg, I can't remember which one it is, is chiming in. And we're starting fires on the Alaska. Another good thing about this is since these guns are heavy cruiser guns with a light cruiser reload... You don't have to spec equilibrium of power in order to penetrate thicker armor values, like 32 millimeters. These 203 guns will already pen 32 millimeters of armor alone, and they'll retain that excellent fire chance, which EOP cuts down if you use it to buff the penetration of smaller guns. In any case, we finish this game with a Kraken Unleashed, 137,000 damage done. Obviously, this ship is capable of much, much more than that, but it is a very effective ship, and I think it has a very important role to play at the legendary tier, so I certainly recommend starting the Bureau Project. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.